G'day. This is the fourth video in this series uh, that I've put together basically as a record of my construction of uh, LBSC's Virginia uh, live steam locomotive in three and a half inch gauge. Uh, in this video I've uh, decided to cover some of the uh, design and construction of the boiler. Uh, I thought I'd uh, turn my attention to that uh, at this point of the project. Uh, as many of you may know, it's a significant uh, subset, I guess, of model engineering skills. It's very different from uh, machining, you know, valve uh, parts or, or wheels or pistons and things like that. Um, it is really copper smithing uh, for copper boilers. Um, and it's, it's very enjoyable, but it's uh, really uh, an art in its own right. So I thought I'd use this video just to demonstrate how I approach this uh, and, and how I've gone so far. And um, I'm very much an amateur, so, uh, you know, this is, I'm not suggesting this is how you should do it. But this is just uh, how I approached it. LBSC offered two designs for boilers for Virginia, a large and a small. Uh, I chose the small uh, for my project, which is represented here. This is the drawing from Model Engineer magazine, a side elevation. Uh, for no other reason other than one of my fellow club members uh, had a set of formers that he had made for his Virginia that he offered to loan me. So I figured that would uh, save me a little bit of time and effort. So I went with the small boiler version. In order to be sure that my boiler would be compliant for public running, I took LBSC's design and compared it to the uh, Australian Miniature Boiler Safety Committee's code for copper boilers. Uh, now while many, many boilers uh, have been built to this design and, and have been perfectly uh, safe, I thought this would be an interesting exercise just to see uh, how it compares, noting that the design for this boiler is now, you know, in excess of 70 years old. So I went through the code uh, and talked to a couple of friends through my club who uh, have far more experience than I do, uh, and, and went through essentially step by step following each section of the code to see where the boiler was compliant uh, or not. And there's some examples here of of the simple sort of uh, mapping that I did. Uh, I only found a number of things that uh, weren't compliant with today's code, three items, um, but not by any means uh, unsafe, uh, just that the code uh, is slightly different uh, to what uh, LBSC um, prescribed. And that was the uh, diameter and the, uh, the pitch of the stays on the flat areas. Uh, the superheater flues uh, were slightly under thickness against today's standard uh, and the uh, longitudinal stays uh, I've deleted uh, and as well as the girder stays uh, which are no longer supported in the code uh, and come up with an alternate arrangement that does satisfy the code. Uh, and I've also gone with the type G uh, throat plate arrangement you can see in the diagram here. Uh, to get uh, a silver brazed uh, joint on the barrel and on the uh, outer wrapper for the firebox. While I was looking for a solution uh, for the replacement of the, the girder stays, I had a, uh, a chat with a friend of mine back in, um, in Melbourne uh, as a member of the club, the Steam Locomotive Society of Victoria, where I was once a member. And uh, you can see in these images, we were talking through using rod stays to uh, replace the girder stays and, and he was extremely helpful. Um, I can't recommend enough being a member of a, of a model engineering club uh, when you're in this hobby. Once I'd settled on, a, uh, on what I needed, uh, I had some copper um, that was actually very generously given to me by a, a club member here. Uh, where I am in, uh, in Canada and you can see here I, I marked out um, the different uh, components I would need on the copper sheet. I made paper templates and then uh, moved them about 
um, to determine uh, what would work best uh, as far as optimising the, the use of the copper uh, and then proceeded to uh, cut out uh, the copper. The copper was slightly thicker than required um, but noting that I was, I was given it um, as I said quite generously by a fellow club member I decided to use that so the boiler will be quite over engineered um, compared to the standard. Uh, another club member uh, very generously gave me a bit of uh, seamless copper tube that he'd uh, been sitting on in his shed for many years um, and that's a photo of me around at his place where we're cutting the, uh, the tube to length uh, and also got a, a, a small portion for the smoke box of Virginia as well which has um, been put to one side for now. So moving on to the former, so I got uh, some half inch thick aluminium plate uh, and decided to use that to make uh, formers for the uh, double flange throat plate um, that would go on the boiler. Um, I had timber formers that I'd got from another club member for the remaining um, smoke box tube plate back yet etc. And here I am just cutting out the plate. I tried using a jigsaw, electric jigsaw and a bandsaw and in the end I just used a hacksaw blade um, to help with the rag uh, which is very unscientific but ultimately was effective. Um, then very carefully measured up the formers as required um, for machining, uh, taking into account the thickness of the copper. Um, so one of those will be the actual forming plate and one is the back plate for forming. Uh, and then I proceeded to set them up. They only just fit on my, um, my Maximat uh, compact lathe, which I'm very fond of. Uh, and then I went on to carry out the, the machining of the, um, of the formers. A relatively straightforward task. Uh, these images tell the story. Um, I went on uh, after um, drilling and then uh, boring out the, the hole in the plate to then uh, grind a, a form tool to, um, to get the correct radius. Uh, for the flange and then the backing plate I put a, uh, a large uh, countersink in to allow for the hammer to actually be able to get in and do the, the forming. Uh, and I've got to thank uh, uh, Keith Appleton, one of his videos I saw online where he was at Blackgates and they were talking about making, uh, I th well, they were forming some um, flanging some plates for a boiler there and, and I took some notes on how they did that and it was very very uh, useful so I uh, recommend you have a look at that video. So it's just the the ground tool in the image there um, nothing too complicated there just to get the correct radius uh, for, the, uh, for the copper flange. And as I mentioned the uh, aluminium uh, plate uh, the, the formers, the size of them, you can see they really are at the limit uh, of the swing of this um, Maximat lathe. Um, but uh, using the half inch aluminium plate um, really worked out very, very well. Um, it's very nice to machine, not too heavy, um, and uh, it's very good for um, doing the actual forming um, of the, the, the flange plates of copper uh, when I got to that point. Um, so uh, cost a little bit to purchase but um, really worthwhile uh, and I certainly uh, measured uh, and checked more than once before I did any machining just to ensure I had that right and, uh, and that all went uh, relatively well. So once I had those complete uh, I had a, a back plate and a forming plate and then you can see in the image there I also made a, a centre plug. Uh, I also made a back head former where I, I cut, cut that by freehand and then used um, an angle grinder uh, with a sanding disc to get the, the radius. Um, and that uh, took a little while, just went carefully, uh, and that worked out well. Uh, put a little pin in the center to locate um, the former for the tube and for the, um, the throat plate, and uh, in some further images that becomes evident um, how that works, and that's relatively straightforward. So just a couple more photos of the uh, actual formers themselves uh, and then I, I got on to uh, the actual uh, copper smithing uh, if you like. 
one of the guys at the club lent me a very large gas uh, propane burner to go on the gas bottle to uh, anneal the copper plate, which was excellent. Um, but probably more than I needed, very substantial flame, um, but meant that uh, the flanging went fairly smoothly because I had to um, take a trip from the basement outside uh, up and down the stairs every time I needed to re anneal, and that uh, required multiple trips. So, um, that, that was fine. So just some chain drilling there to take out the centre hole. So this is uh, commencing the actual uh, the throat plate for the boiler. Um, and there's some excess material I've left there that you can see. Um, uh, cut that out uh, and then uh, annealed it. Just marked out um, with a pen to make sure I've got everything correct there. I've used uh, left far more material than I needed to. Uh, initially because I was just being ultra cautious. I didn't want to uh, do uh, all of the flanging and then find that I had not a sufficient depth on the flange and, and have to scrap the part. Uh, much easier to have extra and then just carefully measure and the material does stretch uh, as the process goes on. So that's my uh, hearth if you like where I'm just uh, annealing the copper uh, on the old um, on the barbecue. Uh, and that, that worked out um, pretty well. Uh, and as you see, the propane torch was uh, a bit of overkill, but certainly um, very effective in, in hitting the plate and annealing. So this image here is useful and it demonstrates um, why I needed to put that large sort of countersink in to be able to swing the hammer in and actually work the copper down onto the flange. The radius part is at the rear. You can't see that. Um, if I just left it flat, it would have been very difficult to, to press that through. Um, and that's just another image as I progress. So there's probably been a couple of annealings there, uh, and that's uh, how it's sort of slowly unfolding. This process takes a little while. <clears throat> um, I can't recall, I must have annealed probably maybe 10 or 12 times all up. Um, and, and once the copper begins to harden, for those that haven't done this sort of work before, it becomes very evident very quickly that that's occurring. And um, when you've got a lot of material there, as you can see I've got quite a bit of excess material, uh, it begins to uh, crease and you need to remove it. So I basically trimmed it back with an angle grinder as the copper begins to uh, take shape. Otherwise it, um, it work hardens very quickly because it's basically um, being worked onto itself uh, and, it, and it work hardens very fast. So taking off the excess material um, helps in that regard. So that plug there is effectively the same diameter as the boiler tube. And I've put that in there and basically knocked that through to get the final diameter correct, um, both on the inside and the outside uh, of that uh, throat plate. And that, that worked quite well. And, and you can see there, uh, there's a little bit of a gap there, um, but it's, it's quite a good fit. Um, it doesn't want to be too tight because um, the, uh, the um, silver braid in the, the silver solder needs to be able to actually get in there. So if it's, if it's stiff, um, then you won't necessarily get a sound joint. Uh, and that's something that uh, Alec Farmer makes very uh, clear in his book on, uh, on boiler making, which is an excellent uh, how-to on the, on the craft. That's the back head. I've just got that laying on the plans there just to ensure that um, it's uh, the right profile. Um, quite a bit of work in that. Uh, same with the smoke box um, tube plate and they're both coming together there uh, as you can see. Um, again, and you see the, uh, the, all the copper filings on the bench where I've been grinding back and, and reducing the depth of the plates um, to allow that work to continue. Quite time consuming, um, must have spent um, a number of hours on this um, and it's just um, annealing, working the copper, annealing, working the copper um, and it, it's amazing how it will, it will be persuaded into the shape that you want it to be in. Um, just keep annealing and keep working it and I was using a, um, a rubber mallet and a wooden mallet as well, um, certainly not a um, not a steel uh, hammer that would uh, damage the copper and, and put dints in it. So you can see there um, the back head and you can also see the outline of the wrapper 
um, on the sheet, uh, on the plan, and that um, is, is about the right shape there. It's just sitting up a bit high on the, on the plan. But certainly pays to keep checking. So I did a bit of a trial assembly here. Um, there's the outer wrapper as well, which I had our timber former for. Um, and just using some clamps to hold it in place. It was springing off a little bit. Um, not, not ready yet by any stretch. There's still some forming to do. That really, um, I think, pays to get all of this form, the flanging and forming as accurate as possible. Uh, and then when it comes time to assemble, I'll probably um, tap some holes and um, using some uh, copper rivets, I might even um, thread them and, and screw them in just to hold the assembly together uh, for silver, uh, silver brazing. But uh, there's a way to go yet. I've still got to uh, drill holes for tubes, um, mark out all of the stays uh, along the flat surfaces and across the, uh, the crown, um, and drill holes uh, in the back end for fittings, fire hole, and then look at um, bushes and things like that. And I've got to get some bronze, and uh, I haven't actually um, determined exactly where I'm going to lay out the bushes. And, and the arrangement there. So still quite a bit to do, but that's progress thus far. Very enjoyable, um, extreme, very different to machining, um, but, but really rewarding uh, and, a, and a real pleasure to work with copper. I really enjoy it. So um, once I get further, I'll provide a, an update. Thanks for watching.